voice. Uh, thankfully, uh, I'm a professional fighter, not a public speaker. As Vivian said earlier, it was something, uh, it was something great. We're nervous of rejection, you know, but there, is, there isn't really a rejection here. This is, this is a real story. So I'm going to bring you straight in. I want you to imagine a 20 year old in a, in a very powerful position. The word that speaks, so to speak. Uh, everybody's telling you you're the man, you know, you're, you're in a very powerful situation in, in a Europe's leading promotion. And from that, from that, basically, everything can change, you know. So I, I was in, in such a powerful position. I've got to 5-0. You know, I'm unbeaten in my career, in my fighting career. I finished all my opponents. People are telling me I, I am the man, you know. Uh, basically, the, the promotion I was fighting for, they were coming to Belfast. Uh, they were coming to the SSE. So I had this amazing opportunity to, to lead the way, so to speak. Uh, uh, basically, that's where we're going to go back and actually win the big battle. I got to 5-0, and, and when I got to 5-0, it was on my 21st birthday. Uh, I was fighting in the free arena in Dublin, a very very good arena, very famous arena. Uh, I had a lot of people in, in attendance, there were 75 people, including my father. My father is someone who is a massive part of my story, and we're going to talk about that. My father passed away a month later, uh, than on my 21st birthday. He passed away a month, a month after that. So now, now what I have here, I have a situation. I have a situation to go this way. And just you know, sit back, not fight, not fight for this big title that's coming up, or did I go for it? Did I take take the big decision? What I wanted to fight for so long. It was actually the last fight me and my father talked about. So you know, on one side of it, everybody telling me what to do, what I should do. On this side, my head saying I know what I should do, and I know what my my father would want me to do. So with that being said, I took a few days, a few, you know, I was moping around as you can imagine, and what I done was. I picked an inner strength and I went for it. You know, I, I signed the fight contract and that was it. We were, we were basically started. So MMA for me at that stage, MMA mixed martial arts, uh, basically it was, it was my uh, it was my safety. You know, uh, nothing else mattered when I was in the mats in the gym. And, and and for me, that was the most part the powerful feeling of the whole thing. Not fighting for the British title that was coming up. It was the feeling of being able to get away through a martial art, through a passion, through through the sport, and that's, that's basically what it was, you know. So from there, I went into this fight, you know, uh, a lot of media, a lot of media, you know, Reese McKee fighting after the, the death of his father, you know. This, this was the man that I lived with, you know, he was, it was just me and my dad in the house, he was my best friend, so to speak, he done everything for me, all the, all the stuff that a great father will do, he done that for me, so now I didn't have that man by my side, it's still a great family, a great supportive friends and whatnot. So when in this fight, and uh, you know, I, I'm not a spiritual man or, or anything like that, but I had a great sense of like, this is exactly where I should be at this exact moment in my life. And, and it was. So I was fighting another guy who was 5 and also, an English guy. Uh, his name was Jai Herbert. I went in and, and I knocked him out in four minutes into the fight. The most amazing feeling. I ran to the camera, I took my gum shield out, my gum shield said, all for you, Dad. It was a great te testimonial. I held the, the gum shield to the camera, and for me, that was the best moment of my life, like hands down. So from there, we're in, we're in a high, the hype continues. The, the you're the man, they all build up, and now the man even more, so to speak. So then, Bama come to Belfast. Bama is a promotion I fight for. They lead the shows, they are the shows. So they come to Belfast, Belfast, 15 minutes up the road from where I live. I sell 250 tickets, 249 tickets, that is always a, always upset me. Uh, so we'll turn around behind tickets, and then I fall second fight day. So here I are, 249 tickets. This is the moment. This is the, anybody from from the north dreams of fighting in these arenas, and I, I've got the chance. But I'm sick. I'm second fight day. So what do I do? I should pull out of the fight. I don't. I go ahead with the fight. I had a minute of energy in me. I was severely dehydrated. All the all the bad stuff. I'm not in the in the bad details, but I, I went along with the fight anyway. Four minutes and 58 seconds into the fight, it stopped. Uh, my opponent kneed me on the, on the left orbital, shatters my whole face. So I've lost the title, now I've lost everything again. Okay, so now we're, in a, we're kind of back to where we were. And it's funny as we're here today, I was saying to the guy earlier, the Delphi Hotel uh, next door, me and Rebecca came, and we hid there. You know, we were there for three days. And for me, that was my safety net again. So as I had it with MMA, now the Delphi was my safety net. And that was for me just to get away from everything. Okay. So then what, well, from now I've lost the title, I don't really know where I'm going, so I've got to fight to Canada. 
Canada is uh, in Montreal, Canada. It's uh, home to one of the best gyms in the world. A renowned guy called George St. Pierre goes by the name of GSP. It's his gym. I go there, I spend five weeks. I remember sitting on the, on the flight to Canada with my hands here, saying, what have I done? Totally uncomfortable, against everything. I feel like, to a sense, I felt like everything was going wrong. It was going right, now it's going wrong. So I was on that flight. I remember landing there. It was about half 10 in Montreal. The snow was coming down. And I remember, I remember, well, that night, I remember sleeping on a coat because they had no blankets. It was a, a fighter's door, not the fancy place, I'll, I'll assure you. And I, I rang the back the next day and I was crying. I said, I want to come home. So for the first two weeks, I looked at Skyscanner every day and priced the flight. So I was going to come home, 100%. Five weeks later, I was on the flight home, completed a training camp. I came back. I went into a fight with a, with a tough guy from Dublin. It was a draw. It wasn't great, but I was back. And that, that was the main thing. So I overcame a lot and I was back. So from there, I started gathering a few wins. I fought smaller fights. Uh, still good fights on the journey. And then the, the word came about the rematch with the guy that took the belt from me in Belfast. Now this, this was another big one for me. This was, if, if I had a poster of this guy beside my bed, then there was a poster there because I wanted that fight back. It played a massive part in my life. He took everything I wanted away in Belfast in the 249 tickets. <laughs> so the fight was set. The fight was set for Wembley in London. So a very big arena, very prestigious. And the training was, Everything went fantastic, so was good, amazing, could have went better, great circle, great everything, perfect. But the moment I walked out, I remember walking and I was standing in the alleyway of the, this SSE, or the SSE in Wembley, and I remember thinking, well what if I lose to the same guy twice? And, and that moment, was, that, this was a mega break, I was standing, I remember standing, and my coach Rodney came behind me and he patted me in the back and said, not this time. And it was just, it was just something, it's a very powerful moment that I gained, that I'll never forget. Long story short, I beat this guy 4 minutes 58 seconds of the first round. The exact same time he beat me, and the exact same shot he beat me. I actually broke his orbital again. <laughs> you, couldn't believe, you, couldn't, you couldn't believe that it's, it's there. It's a, it's a fact. You can walk, go watch the two fights and you'll compare them. So basically now I'm sitting as a world champion. Again, everything's good. It's great. We're in London again. And then I get an offer of a quick fight. A quick fight, a quick return. I fight the guy. He, he's dropping weight. He comes down to fight me. And I lose it all again. Okay, but this time it's not as bad. I, I, I fought back. Now I'm back. I don't have the loss when you know it, it's not as a it's not as a devastating effect. I mean, I'm better coped with it now. So basically, where I've went since since I've lost that title again, I've signed for a different promotion, a leading promotion. This is a bigger promotion. It's a promotion called Cage Warriors, and it's it's the top top one in the, in Europe. From here, Cage Warriors have a stream to the UFC. The UFC is the Premier League of football. You know, so this is, I'm going to the, the pinnacle of the sport now, and this is the direct loop. So that's where I'm basically at at the minute. I'm on a two fight win streak. At the minute I'm currently injured, so that's why I'm not fighting. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not training tonight because, uh, because I'm injured, uh, basically. Uh, what I'm also at at the minute is I'm running a gym. I'm running Bruce McKee training, and it's in Kilray, so not too far from here. And that's basically keep me busy. I'm now starting to pass knowledge on. I'm trying to give these fighters and these young kids the platform that I had to, to basically be a safety net on people, you know. So like, as a good friend of mine said, he said, you never know when a kid comes through the door. This could be the only place and the only time there someone sends something positive to them. And that stuck with me. That's very, very powerful. So as these kids come in, I have the ability to change their life and leave them, have them, have them leave and thinking, you know what, race believed in me. And for me, that, that's, that's absolutely huge. As well as that, we're launching something called the Fight Project. The Fight Project, it's not a white collar, it's uh, what the Fight Project is. We are taking 24 people who have done nothing, they want to walk their own journey. They want to walk the walk that I walk, if that makes sense, too many walks. <laughs> so what they're going to do, I'm going to train them eight weeks, I'm going to lead them through everything that I go through, and we're going to make the walk together. And that's going to be on the 24th of August in the Wild Dog in Portland. So, another interesting point, I was on the way home uh, two weeks ago, uh, from a boxing show, I was judging. That's that's my upper duty. Mm. Uh, I was judging at a white collar show, and Gary tagged me in a, in a podcast. And what was very interesting in the podcast was Gary got a bit of grief, mm. so to speak, from uh, a few LinkedIn members. I'm not on LinkedIn, but I've heard about it. Uh, basically, of uh, me being, you know, fighting in a blood sport, and uh, the photos of me. I'm sure you have probably seen standing in blood and whatnot. Mm. So Gary was getting a bit ridiculed for for having me here. 
And the reason that I think I'm here is because I'm a bit of a fighter. Uh, but what I think is we all we all have that inner fight in us, whether it's Vivian leading leader company or Lewis leading this company, we all have a fight in us. And uh, I think that's very important to, to realize that when times get tough, it, it's up to you. You, you. You've got that fight in you. And yes, I may be a fighter who fights people, but we're all fighters, really. And, uh, and that's really it. So I'd like to thank Dory for having me here today. Thank you all for